see how far we get. Vertical and horizontal particle motion with integration. And there's like any notes you take are just going to be on the page because it's kind of like all there. Um, so there's position, velocity, acceleration. Position is usually S or X or Y. Um, this is position on a horizontal or vertical line. So this is not um, not like in physics where you do like projectile motion. It's not that kind of thing. It's all on a horizontal line or on a vertical line. Units would obviously be distance units. Um, position is the same as the location. Um, if you are the object, then this is your location. Um, and T is in time. Again, we've done this already. We're just going to add some stuff here in a minute. Velocity, um, V, instantaneous rate of change, is V. Um, be careful. You know what should stick right in here? Because I don't think it's in here. Is average rate of change of position. which means average velocity is s of 2 minus s of 1 over change in time, however, however, whatever long that time is. That's average velocity. That's not. that's not instantaneous velocity. That's algebra slope, not calculus slope. Calculus slope. V is the derivative of the position function, s prime or ds dt. Units are velocity, are feet per minute, meters per second, and so on. Um, velocity is related to speed, but they're not the same. Hopefully, remember this: speed is the absolute value of velocity. Speed can only be positive. Um, here's some of the stuff about forward and backwards. If you're driving a car forward, your velocity is positive. Your speed is positive. If you're driving in reverse, your velocity is negative, but your speed is still positive. Uh, there's also acceleration stuff going on we'll talk about in a minute. Um, if velocity is positive, you're moving to the right or up. You know that already, I think. That's old stuff. If velocity is negative, you're left or down. You don't have anybody with you, Miss Tidy? Just, just you? Just me. Okay. I'm doing a culture walk. Oh, okay. I'm trying to think of something funny to say, but we'll just leave it alone. <laughs> Um, if velocity is zero, then you're not moving. Uh, was that on the last test? Is that the question yeah. you were asking? On the test you just took, there was a question about velocity being zero, and I think it gave you the position. And so you should just take the derivative and set it equal to zero. Yeah. You can do that. If you plug in all the answer choices, that's fine, but you would need to plug them into the derivative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and that's fine. ds dt equals zero, or v equals zero. Acceleration function, again, acceleration is the derivative of velocity, which means it's the second derivative of position. Units, you know this from physics and from earlier, meters per second squared, uh, miles per hour squared. If acceleration is positive, this is where things get a little bit tricky. If acceleration is positive, the velocity is increasing. But that could mean you go from negative uh, 10 to negative 5. Yeah, that doesn't mean. That means you have positive acceleration. But that would mean you're slowing down? But you are slowing down. Yes. This is um, when you're in reverse in your car mm -hmm. and you press the brake, mm -hmm. what's your acceleration? Positive or negative? Positive. Positive. Yeah. But you're really slowing positive down. Positive. But you're slowing down. But it's positive. But your velocity is increasing. Like think about just good old number line. Negative 10 to negative 5. Your velocity is increasing. It doesn't it feels weird to say. But if your velocity goes from negative 10 to negative 5, that's an increase. Don't think about it too much. Mathematically. Numerically. Even though you are slowing down. But when you say slowing down, that's a speed thing, not a velocity thing. Yeah, I'm just not going to think about it. Well, you could not think about it hard, but it's always a question on the AP test. 
Speed increasing, speed decreasing. Speed's absolute value of velocity. You know that. Basically, this is what we talked about much earlier. When acceleration and velocity have the same sign, you're speeding up. That's um, gas pedal in drive. Oh, speeding up. I meant I'm just not going to think about the application in the real world too hard. Because then I'll confuse myself when I'm driving. Well, yeah, don't be pondering this while you're driving. That might be dangerous. <laughs> Wait till you get home to consider or have someone else drive and you well, ponder what's happening. Especially since you'd be in reverse and you got to pay extra attention. Especially in the parking lot. If you hit the gas pedal while you're in drive, that's a positive acceleration. Uh, and your speed is increasing. But your speed is decreasing when you hit the brake uh, while in reverse. All right, if you hit the brake while you're in reverse, obviously you're slowing down. But your acceleration is positive, your velocity is negative, so your speed is decreasing. Again, okay, that's one that you just have to remember that because they will ask that frequently. That's also a lot of times where you end up with the number line for velocity and the number line for acceleration. And you have to look and see um, you know, where things are the same and where they're different. And, for speeding up and slowing down. So if that was the the picture, I don't even know if that picture makes sense, but with that picture, where would you be where would you be speeding up in there. zone A, B, or C? B. B, because your your signs match. So you're going in reverse, your acceleration is negative, so you're speeding up, speeding up backwards. Do you all remember this from the last time we did this? Yeah. Okay. Good. We're inching up on the new stuff here. Displacement. Change in position from time A to time B. So that's just, like, that's an algebra problem right there. Displacement. Where were you at time B minus where you were at time A? But integration. Into, if you integrate s prime, you get back to s, regular s, mm -hmm. um, the antiderivative of the derivative. By the way, this was the the bonus, sort of. Yeah. Actually, the bonus wasn't the antiderivative of the derivative. Mm -hmm. It was the derivative of the antiderivative, mm -hmm. which is kind of the same thing. Yeah. Um, just don't forget the chain rule. Yeah. Trey, I think you got it right, if I remember right. I don't, uh, you got it. I don't remember. I don't remember. Not many people got it right. Um, and since s prime is the same as v, you could write it like this. So that looks funny, maybe, but the antiderivative of velocity is position. Total distance traveled. This is. Do you remember we doing this? This is. This one's a pain because you have to. You have to find all the places you stop. Give me some feedback. Do you remember this or not? Yeah. This was a pain. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, I hated that. Yeah, because it's like, okay, we stopped at 2, so we got to think, what happened from 0 to 2? Okay. And then we stopped at 5, so we got to think, well, what do we do from 2 to 5? There wasn't a quick and easy way to do it. Can, can we have the, we're going to have the calculator do that, though, right? Yeah, yeah you're still going to, you're going to have a calculator, cool. um, but it's still, <laughs> clearly, this is cumbersome. And that's right. Like, you Annoying. just... You're, uh, annoying is a fair word, too. Like, you just have to find all the places at zero and then slow down. Okay, from zero to two, what happened? From two to five, what happened? From five to eight, what happened? And you just have to go slow. Um, if you have a calculator, it's obviously easy to do integration because you can let the calculator do it. Um, and in fact, here's the, 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 the two cheat formulas or the one cheat formula that we didn't have before. So before it was this cumbersome, annoying, <laughs> I'm not going to phrase it that way. It wasn't that bad. But now you can get total distance traveled by taking the antiderivative of the speed, right? The absolute value of velocity is the speed. So this is probably. I think this is the only new thing today. 
is that one. It's a great new thing, though, because then you don't have to go piece by piece by piece by piece. You can let the calculator do that. That would be really hard to do by hand. But with a calculator, you can let the calculator do that and be fine. Summary. I'm not going to walk through all those. We said all those. You know all of those. Except for maybe this last one is the new thing. That's the new thing. The total distance traveled with the absolute value bars in there. All right, let's work an actual problem here with the calculator. A calculator moves along a line, so its position is given by that thing. What is the velocity of the particle when its acceleration is zero? Did nobody actually just said a calculator moves along a line? Did I say that? Yeah. Why did you say that? I don't know. Why didn't anybody Why else stop me from saying it? I usually catch that was the only one that laughed. And I was like, we can check we'll the, have the video to check later. The video after because my brain did, I guess my brain's just fried. There's your culture. They're so in sync with what I'm saying. They they don't even hear the words I say, they hear the ideas behind it. That's my how good heard, like, That's my how good we are. Get a calculator out and then particle moves along the line. All right, let's be careful on this one cuz there's <laughs> Three different words. Four if you count calculator. S is position. It asks for velocity when acceleration is zero. So how, where do I start? What do I do first on this problem? Take the derivative. <laughs> take the derivative just because that's what we always do? Well, that's, that's right. You have to take the double derivative because velocity is S prime and acceleration is S double prime. Yes, I will need a second derivative to figure out when it's zero. So first derivative, and I, there's a way to do this in the calculator, but I think this first part is going to be easier not in the calculator. So derivative cosine is, wow, I'm looking for my popsicle sticks for six or? period. <coughs> I think it's not here. How unfortunate. Oh, as it is here, you just evaded. Oh, Ty's here, though. So, Ty, I know Trey asked a good question. Yeah, so is it, are you saying? Yeah, what am I asking exactly? So, Ty, ignore Preston because I don't know what he's telling you. I'm not listening to Preston ever. It's not. <laughs> What's the derivative of that full thing? Okay, so I'll put it like, Trey, don't give him any hints. What's the derivative of negative 4 cosine? You got it. You got it. There's no chain rule. Well, there's there's always chain rule, but chain rule's one. Yeah. What do you think, Trey? Are you trying to help him no, here? Just, What's the derivative of cosine, Ty? Let's back up and... There we go. That's what Trey was going to ask. It's, is it sine? <laughs> Thank you, Trey. It is yeah. negative sine. Preston said it. Oh. So we put the two negatives together, we get positive for cosine t. Yay. Oh, oh. No. Okay. Thank you. Now you're paying attention. For sine of t. Okay. Um, uh, Luna, how about the the next piece there? What's the derivative of? That's the quotient rule. Uh, n doesn't have to be the quotient rule. That'd be the long way around. Because another way to write that is just negative one half t squared. Yep. That would be oh. a much easier way to do that problem. Negative t. Yeah. If you did the quotient rule, you would eventually get, get negative t. And with how the quotient rules burned me before. It's probably not the best option. No, because forgetting it has burned me. I would probably do it the long way just to make sure. Uh, Kristen, how about the derivative of 10? <laughs> Shaking your head was, was pretty close to the right answer. No. Nothing, yes. Zero. Derivative of 10 is zero. Because it's a constant. Um, when does plus C show up? So that's a good... Antiderivatives. Antiderivatives or integrals, okay? So there's my first derivative. 
I need a second derivative to get to acceleration. This is your favorite? Okay. Kyle, what's the derivative of 4 sine of t? 4 cos t, yes. 4 cosine of t. Logan, how about the derivative of minus t? It would just be minus 1. It would be minus 1. Now, back to the question. When is the acceleration 0? Set it equal to 0 and we'll find out. So set it equal to 0 and let's see. So cosine of t equals 1 fourth. Uh -huh. uh, we're doing, we just finished unit circle in pre-cal. We've done that. Is that a unit circle value? No. Is there a place? Well, I remember. Careful how I word it. Is there a place on the unit circle whose cosine is 1 fourth? Yes, but it's not one of the nice angles. Yeah. So how do I figure out where this happens? I can find out. Calculator. calculator. How would you like to use the calculator? Because there's another... Y equals? Okay. Y equals is probably a good way to go. What do you want to do Y equals of, though? Just do cosine and look for when it's one quarter. Can I do it a different way? What if I change my equation to cosine of x minus 1 fourth? Then you look for the zeros. Then I'd look for the zeros. And it's a little easier um, to do it that way. If you, Otherwise, you got to set one of them equal to cosine and one of them equal to 1 fourth and do their intersection. It's well, just, not that hard. It's not, but I'd rather do it this way because then I, I'm just going to find my zeros. Let's see. Probably should be in radians. Yeah, Someone was in degrees on this calculator. Probably for physics or something. Maybe for physics. Or for um, calculus BC. And my window, it tells me to go from 0 to pi. <laughs> 0 to pi. <laughs> Don't tell him anything. <laughs> right, I'm just telling you to circle. That's what you're doing. I just didn't want to interrupt. Look. Which of the following exist? I don't know what that's asking. Well, that must mean some what? of them don't exist. That's all I can say. Okay. So just find them and see which ones exist. Okay. Thank you. Apologies to the viewers at home for that. Um, zero to pi will be our window, so we can look and see. I know that cosine usually stays between negative 1 and 1. So there's what I'm looking for. Second calc, zero. Are we familiar with this? Left bound, right bound stuff. And usually it walks you through it. So even if you forget exactly, you can type it, it in asks. The number and it'll just jump to it for you. you can, but if you knew what numbers those were, guess, you just hit enter. So 1.318116, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No, 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 no. Point is 1.32. Um, but. Well, wait a minute. It's asking for velocity. Yep, if you're going quick, you think, oh, look, there's my answer, 1.32. Oh. But that's, what did we just that's find? You just found you when acceleration is zero. Jeez, so that's mean? the time, the time when, yeah. when A equals zero. So that's, that's not what we're looking for. So now we need velocity at <coughs> that time. So we could graph it, or since it's just one problem, it's probably easier to just type it in. 4 sine of 1.3, Like You should carry more than AP test. you got to be accurate to three decimals. That means... In the intermediate steps, you got to carry more than three so that when you get to the end and chop it off at three, you're still good, right? It's a significant figure thing. Like don't don't round early. Round don't round to the end. Minus 1.318116. Hopefully that is an answer. Mm -hmm. There it is. The decimal thing and rounding thing isn't as important on a multiple choice tests because they're not going to give you 
2.55 and 2.54 and 2.56. They're not that cruel. But on a free response question, first of all, 2.55 would not even be right because you have to give three decimals. You'd have to be 2.555. And they'll let you go one up or one down, but more than that, you don't get credit. Mm -hmm. Could you have taken the inverse there instead of dropping it? Yes, definitely. Does that make sense? Yeah. The graphing? Yeah. You're good. Um, the reason I graphed it was I was worried about, and I didn't want to have to think about it, I was worried about did it happen more than once? Like, it, probably not because my answer choices are only one. But you know cosine, especially if we expanded our graph, it's going to be, yeah. you know, it's going to have more than one answer. Is so I wanted to just look at the graph to see what, make sure I looked at what I got. Especially true for uh, for sine, because if you do inverse sine, you're going to get an, you might get a negative, and that might not be in your, so I think looking at the picture is more helpful, even though it's longer. Questions on that one? So it wasn't hard, but that's a lot of pieces to one question. Nick? Could you just remind me again how to do the zero? Uh, yeah. On the so you're on your graph. Yeah. There's a zero that you're looking for. Um, you want to do some calculus things. So second calc. You make it that far, you're like, oh, well, there's zero, so I guess we'll do that. And then it starts walking you through it. Yeah. Left bound means get to the left of the zero. Right bound means get to the right of the zero. And guess, you can just hit enter if you like, or you can like go try to get it right on the zero. See if you can have fun with accuracy. You're, you're saving your calculator milliseconds if you do that, which means it took longer for you to scroll over there than to just hit enter, but maybe your calculator thanks you. Number two, we'll see how far we get on number two. Hoping to get through C or D, we'll see. Actually, D would be a great place to stop. See if we can get through D. Velocity of the particle is moving along the x-axis given by, okay, we've got velocity. Now we have the position of the particle at t equals zero, x of zero is two. Let's be careful though, they gave us an equation for velocity, but a, a value for position. So we something's going on here. We better be careful. What is the acceleration of the particle at t equals 3? So how do I, what do I do? Take the derivative of t minus 7 times cosine t. Mm-hmm. Now, the last one we did by hand because it was pretty straightforward. This one is yucky. So, it says calculator. And since it's so long, I think I'm going to go ahead and put that in the for y1, because I bet I'm going to have to use it more than once. x minus 7 cosine of x. Um, for 0 to 7, so I can go ahead and make my window 0 to 7. And I have no idea what the y value should be. Negative 3 to 3 and see if that that was not a good pick. I personally went um, negative 3 to 7. Negative 7 to 7. There we go. That, see everything there. So I'm looking at velocity. If I want the acceleration at time 3, Do you remember how to get your calculator to do that? Or have we used the calculator to do this? For an integral? No, I want the dvdt at 3. Well, if you forget, all your magic buttons are calculus, second calculus. Dy dx. Dy dx. So let's find the slope. And then you can arrow around, or this is a good one to just press 3. 
find dy dx at 3. So there's your answer. Yay. 4, 2, 4, 2, 6. Uh, it didn't give me any units, so I don't have to give units. By the way, I've always thought this was odd, but they will accept a rounded answer or a truncated answer. So if you don't want a round, which I don't know why you, I don't know, whatever. They'll accept rounded or truncated. <coughs> part B, what is the position of the particle at time 7? So x of 7. Well, I don't, I don't have a... You don't have an S. I don't have an X. I have a V. You have an S. Or an S. Oh, this makes sense. So now you got to go into the integrate. Yeah, I, I have to integrate, right? Because I, I took the derivative of position X, V, T. Going this way is derivatives. Going the other way is integrals. So if I got velocity and I want to get position, I need to integrate the velocity. But, okay, that's the first step. What what else do I need to know? Because I'm not going to integrate that by hand. I'm not sure I even know how to integrate that by hand. You could try, but it would be yucky. That would be terrible. You're I have a calculator. So the, the calculator can do an integral. Right? Math 9 was the, the, the magic button for for integration. Ooh, that's a yucky one because that one doesn't have the nice symbols on it. But at some point, I need limits. So what, what would my limits be? Uh, like 6.5 to 7.5? Let's see. Oops, that one's dead. Um, why 0 to 7? Yeah, that's, that's, what told us. that's what we have and what we're looking for. X of 0 we know. That's 2. X of 7 we're looking for. In fact, the antiderivative of velocity gives me position. So X of 7 equals X of 0 plus this integral. By the way, that's all the work you'd have to show because the calculator is doing all the work. And you've already identified what x of 0 is. That's 2. The calculator is going to do this. So you don't have to show any more work than that. And let's see, math 9, there's the one I was looking for. 0 to 7. Do you remember another? Sh yeah, the y1. I can type all that in if I want to, or I can just say, wait a minute, I already have that plugged in for y1. So let's do this the easy way. How do you do it on the Why is that not the answer? Because that's going to be a very add common add mistake. Because you got to add 2. Yeah, that's only the this part of it. 2 plus negative 24 dot dot dot. So I'm just going to add 2 and get negative 22.470. Do you want format of the old calculator? You have to do y1 comma with respect to x comma from 0 comma to 7. Okay, so I got the x for the y and the x. Computer. Why is that wrong? Maybe it's x and Am I in radians or degrees? Dope, my answer's not right. When I switched calculators, I was in degrees. Uh -huh. So the one that popped up on here? So let's do this one. There we go. Plus 2. Plus 2. 1.754. I was about to say, that seems like an There we go. Much better. So, so it's like 
the answer in three decimal places? Even yes. Even if it's zero, that's the last one? Even if it's what? Zero. Even in the third decimal place is a zero? Right there. Yes, on this one. The th um, so they wouldn't count off for that. Right. Yeah. So it, for the old calculators, it goes y1, comma, x. Okay. What you're taking the integral of, then the variable you're using, and then lower limit and upper limit. On what intervals is the particle moving to the left? What does moving to the left mean? When is velocity negative? V is negative. Well, I have a graph of V. From 0 to 7. Whoops. Two calculators again. There's my graph of V. So my justify is V is negative. Now I'm just going to the calculator and saying 0 to something and then something to 7. I just need to go get those somethings because I'm just looking at my calculator. So it feels a little bit weird on the calculator, on the free response calculator section because sometimes it feels like you're not writing down a whole lot of work because the calculator is doing it. And that's fine. They know that. Make sure, though, that you do write down what you need to. Justify. I'm looking for where V is negative. So let's go find those spots. Left bound, right bound, guess. 1.571. I think that's pi over 2, but doesn't matter. We're using the calculator. Second calc 0. Let's go get the other one. Yeah, it is pi over 1. Or pi over 2. Let's see what this one is. That one might be 3 pi over 2. But 4.71. But I have a calculator, so I don't need to worry about it. I was just curious. Actually, let's stop there because um, displacement versus distance, yes. that's a good thing to talk about. So we'll talk about that on Monday. Your assignment today is 1 through 5. 1 through 5.